Yes, sir. We're officially back at it. This is Book Nice coming at you from New York International Toy Fair 2017. We are here at the Bluefin Tamashi Nations booth. We have Rich with us. He's going to show us around. We're going to ask him a bunch of questions. We're going to do delve as deep into the uh, company as we possibly can and uh, hopefully get a lot of questions answered for you guys. All right, let's do it. Okay, so over here we have our Star Wars plastic models from Bandai. Um, these are new, uh, new to the U.S., uh, just in. Uh, the really cool thing about these is that they don't require any paint or glue. Um, no, no glue um, because they, they're snap fit, but um, uh, it's not like a, like the cheap snack stuff. Uh, it's it's super highly detailed, um, and the sprue kits actually come in multiple colors due to a patented technology, um, so you don't have to paint them. Um, but if you do end up painting them, what's really cool is that uh, just a little bit of detail and you have something that looks like uh, a prop from the movie so um, super super like incredible looking these are highly detailed definitely something that can be used in background displays or if you're doing something working with a uh, six inch figures or something like that you can use these as sort of perspective items for shots they look very very good very detailed yeah and uh, you know a lot of them are articulated the x-wings uh, s foils open and close uh, the at, -AT walker uh, can walk um, uh, it, it can even pose uh, in the in the, uh, when the the one that drops uh, on its on its chin uh, and that we see in Empire. Like it can recreate that pose. So uh, you know, just just great attention to detail. Uh, this is also one of the model kits. What's amazing about this is that. You build this with electronics, uh, so when you have it done, um, you put it on this this pedestal. So you hear some of the sounds. As well as open and close. Wow, that's cool. Got a little uh, fighter pilot inside of there too, so highly, highly detailed. Very nice. This is our movie realization line from Star Wars. Uh, it's uh, feudal Japanese fused with Star Wars. Uh, so uh, the artist uh, that created these uh, has, you can see some of the illustrations of his work, um, which kind of also give you an idea of, of what's to come in the future potentially. Um, most of what's here we've revealed already, but these dioramas uh, are being uh, displayed for the first time in the U.S. Um, we've had a lot of people asking about them, whether they ever be available. Um, let us know if you, if you like these. Um, you know, tell us, uh, you know, share share on social you want to see them, and um, you know, we'll, we'll look into it. And these are fully articulated, correct? Yeah, these figures are all fully articulated. Um, so the Solo Chigokin 12-inch uh, perfect model C-3PO was released uh, in 2013, and um, everyone was asking when's the R2 coming out, when's the R2 coming out. Um, finally, after years of waiting, uh, R2 is coming out uh, late summer, early fall. Uh, R2 will also be die cast um, and is you know, detailed down to the rivets. Uh, one of the awesome things about R2 as well is when Kenny Baker um, was in the R2 costume or in the, in the, the prop, um, in order to walk, uh, they had to put tubes on the side. So he'll also include the tubes that, that fit on the side. Um, so, and no one's ever uh, included that because really no one's ever paid attention that, to that kind of detail. So um, while they're six scale figures, um, they're they're pretty much just like miniature props. One quick question, uh, going back to the movie realization figures, um, can you tell? Can you tell our viewers um, basically when the first one came out and, and what's coming out thereafter and that throughout this year? Yeah, so let me go see. This the Vader. So the um, I don't recall when this Vader first came out. Um, I think it was January 2015 was when the Vader uh, first came out, so Vader uh, kicked off the line. Um, and then we had subsequent troops that followed. Um, and oh, what was the other part of your question? When, when the next one? Yeah, well, what's what's coming out over over the next couple months? Yeah, so uh, June and July, uh, you'll have some, some more troops. Um, you have the archer and, and the drummer. Um, and then after that, um, 
you know, Star Wars Celebration is coming up in a couple of months, uh, and we will have a couple of surprises for you there. Um, but I will say that if you, if you look at these boards, um, it'll give you an idea of what's to come. As you can see, this is a pretty big piece, about uh, 12 inches, like you said. Um, it's heavy. It's very heavy. I would say that it probably weighs maybe like three pounds or something like that. I don't know. Maybe maybe a little less, but it's a very heavy, beefy piece. You get a lot with this die cast, right? So yeah, very, very nice. Very detailed. This is a really nice piece. R2 looks really good too. You got some light up features on R2. Um, this is really nice, man. Expensive though, right? How much? This was three ninety nine ninety nine. Three ninety nine ninety nine. We're not talking three dollars and ninety nine cents, people. <laughs> but yeah, very nice piece though. Very nice. Manga realization. It has uh, Spider Man and Iron Man. Um, so uh, you know, the popularity of the Star Wars license spilled over, and, and Marvel is now getting these uh, incorpor these this design style incorporated into it. Spider Man comes with real metal chains. Um, Got Iron Man here, and then you've got uh, Big Arts. So unfortunately, Doctor Strange didn't make it to the show, but we are showing Iron Man in the Hall of Armor set. So we're now able to bring SH Figure Arts uh, figures um, into the U.S. market, um, which is a huge step uh, in the right direction for us. So we can get these to collectors. Um, these, you know, I think everyone knows the kind of quality and, and detail you get with a Figure Arts figure. Um, I will say that Iron Man is probably some of the best releases from. Figure it's definitely always, always highly detailed, always great paint applications. Can you um can you talk a bit about this base and how that's gonna roll out? I think a little I think some people are a little confused as to how the bases are gonna come, if they're gonna come with an Iron Man, if you're gonna purchase them separately so you can build your whole of armor. Yeah, so the first release is going to include the Iron Man figure. Um, we we went back to Disney and they gave us the okay uh, to do the um, the individual uh, displays as well. Um, that and how uh, future figures are going to come out is still to be determined, um, but but we do have the ability to, to bring that out and make that happen. So, um, yeah, um, it'll, be, it'll be coming. I'm sure you guys are aware that people want to get multiples of the uh, armor storing bases so that way they can store all of their armors and all of the things that they've purchased so far from, from Iron Man. Um, this is Mark, what, six long display This here? is the six, yes. Okay, and that's going to come with the base, correct? Correct. And uh, Doctor Strange is slated for a release when, you think? Uh, I think Doctor Strange was uh, May, uh, it might be June or July. Uh, I don't have a placard in front of me, so I'm not certain, but uh, he follows... Uh, the month after or, or the second month after uh, him. So they're going to be really close to one another. And then um, as figures, uh, you'll, you'll start seeing more Marvel figures in the pipeline um, uh, from, from Tomashi being solicited on uh, through US sites. So. I'm sure our our audience would love to see a complete SH Figure Arts Illuminati. Uh, I know that's probably a really a ways off. I'm, I'm, I'm wishing on a star for that. But uh, uh, Iron Man, we already got a Black Panther. We're gonna get a Doctor Strange. Who else will we need? Richards. Well, we haven't seen him in the, in, in the uh, MCU yet. But I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. Uh, Tamashi is celebrating their 10th anniversary this year. Um, as part of that, they're doing a, uh, a tour, um, multiple cities around the world. Uh, one of the stops will be here in New York City, April 29th and 30th. Um, as part of that, they'll have some new items on display, so you'll get some, some more reveals there. And you'll also be able to purchase uh, some of these exclusives here. Um, so you've got the uh, the Sun Goku, um, you've got the Mazinger, um, the body coons and the, with the uh, with the paint for the 10th anniversary. Tell um, us about the, the uh, stuff. I'm sorry. Tell us about the uh, Sun Goku. Is that uh, pr pretty much the same mold that we've seen before? It's not on this newer. Uh, body mold that we've seen from from Tamashi, huh? No, it's not. But you you can see it's got uh, the, the paint apps and the effect pieces um, kind of match the color. Um, so you know that's that's the uh, and it, and it fits in with the with the uh, celebration for the event. So there was just a good time to release that figure. So the MSRP for this is sixty five dollars. Does that include the effect piece as well? Yeah, I believe it does. It doesn't include. I know the base is not included, the stand, um, but the rest of it is is included with it. Okay, so. Um, We've got some of our, our latest Dragon Ball figures here. Um, 
uh, sell uh, premium color edition is coming out in March. Um, so what you're seeing there is pretty close to final. Um, and then you've got uh, Napa and Vegeta, uh, who are um, you know the newest um, in, in prototype form here. So we've been you guys have been teasing Napa for quite some time. Finally, we got uh, almost finished uh, product here, huh? Um, is he going to have any ab articulation? You think? I think he does have some, and it looks like it's hidden under uh, the piece. Under the armor a bit. Yeah. Um, so the body's similar to the to the thinner, smaller character, so it should get the, the same type of articulation. Do you have any insight on the thought process of uh, releasing like legacy Dragon Ball characters versus the new characters being introduced in Super? I mean, obviously, you want to release the Super characters while the show is still running, while the iron is still hot. Um, I mean, obviously, you know that these legacy characters, no matter when they come out, people will buy them. So I, I assume that's on that's in the thought process um, the thought process of releasing the legacy theory. Yeah, you know, that I think there's there's that part of it and there's also, you know, there are other things that are happening. So um, the Xenoverse um, 2 game here, um, you know, we've got figures from that. So there are other considerations. It's it's you know getting the things out at the right time. Uh, what's cool about these guys from the Xenoverse is that they'll include um, DLC for the game. Um, so you won't see it on the packaging, but we want to make sure that you guys know. Um, unfortunately, when they went to print, because um, these are going to, to several different countries, they can't share. Um, there are certain things that can't be, you know, you can't do this in China, you can do this in the U.S. So um, to, to make the packaging um, accommodate all uh, regions, uh, had to kind of be standardized. Um, but, you know, there will be DLC content in these, so uh, those two guys, you want to pick them up if, if you're playing the game. Any words on specifics, what the DLC content is? Yeah, so if you if you look back here, um, I don't play the game, so I don't know, but I think there's, uh, it says there are TP metal points and special accessories. Um, I the think there's... Currency in the game. Yeah. yeah. Nice little incentive. Huh? Yeah. So I've noticed that um, you guys obviously debuted with the, the battle damage Goku, and then now Gohan is battle damage as well. Um, do you plan on doing any more battle damage characters in the future? Um, obviously, it's a big staple in Dragon Ball. By the end of fights, uh, they're all ravaged and beat up and stuff. Yeah, uh, you know, if, if they do really well, um, we'll, we'll continue to, to put those kind of characters out. Um, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So the big thing about the Dragon Ball stuff is, is just let us know. You know, we, we read the forums. Um, we're paying attention. Um, so if there's something you guys want, um, you know, just just be vocal about it and. and We'll take it into consideration. So, we just recently had a poll on the, the Japanese website as well. I know a lot of American fans, you know, uh, navigated the website right. all in <laughs> Japanese just to get their opinions yeah. out there. Yeah, and you know, one of the things we're working on is we understand that there's there's an issue of things getting lost in translation. So, we're working to make sure that American fans get their voices heard. Um, you know, our team is growing here in the U.S., so um, we're going to make sure that that you know uh, we get those messages across. To Japan and, and, and they understand um, what what fans here want to see. So, thank you. Oh, Tell them all. If you want to, real quick. <laughs> So you guys are super excited about Sailor Moon, I can, I can see. Um, there was no no hesitation about going and showing these. No, I mean, obviously this is, uh, you know, girls and women, uh, they love this this line and it's super popular um, for them. Um, these are some of the new figures we have um, that, are, that are coming out down the pipelines. Super Sailor Mercury and um, Sailor Moon from, from uh, Crystal. Yeah, the Pretty Guardian is based off the new anime. Correct? Yes, yes. Um, so th those are um, coming out, and then you know we, we can do some more supers depending on, on how well these perform. Um, you'll, see, you'll see some down the road as well. Um, the big thing that actually has been really popular for Sailor Moon is the um, the ornament Proplica from the, um, the end credits. Yeah. Um, every everyone who's watched the show um, recognizes that and is like, oh my god, I have to have that. So um, obviously, I'm sure this is not something you guys want to have. You um, never know. But, <laughs> well, I guess we have <laughs> a Sailor Moon fan. <laughs> so as far as the uh, regular characters go, you guys already completed the, yeah, the, all the regular scouts. core team, yeah, right? Yes. Inner okay. and Outer Scouts are out now, yes. Do you have any plans of completing the team in their uh, Crystal variants? Yeah, so, um, you know, if, if Sailor Moon does well, um, we'll, we'll follow on with the rest, yeah.
Replay. Are there any plans to release more of like these uh, prop replicas? These prop replica yes. Figures? Uh, the the prop replicas are super popular. Um, so you know we're going to continue continue doing them. Uh, as I said, the ornament right now is is it's catching fire. You know, once there's a lot of uh, sites and fan sites that are picking up on it and saying, "Oh my goodness!" You know, I've I never thought I'd see this. Um, this is so cool. So um, you know, based on that popularity alone, <clears throat> it'll help. It'll help get other things in, in the pipeline. Is Proplica specifically to Sailor Moon, or do they delve into other properties as well? It is not, and we are looking at other properties as well. Saint Seiya. I don't know anything about this shit. Sorry. <laughs> All right, this is my expertise. Is it? Yeah. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Uh, so. Uh, Gemini Saga God Cloth um, is is coming out, uh, and so there's a, a premium set. If you missed out on the EX uh, Saga, you can pick him up. Uh, so he was one of the original figures released as part of the EX line, and is just super hard to get. So um, you'll have a chance to pick him up um, uh, in June. Um, you can pick up uh, Saga from the God Cloth. Uh, the EX uh, original release and the um, the Pope uh, in a Saga 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 set, uh, which comes out in June uh, for 350. So um, the great thing about these is, is that they're majority die cast, so all the armors die cast. Um, the wings on the God Cloth aren't uh, only because uh, of weight, but um, like the EX is, is all die cast, and so they're great figures. Um, and uh, Loki again um, uh, will complement uh, all the saints that have been released. Um, uh, in the Solo Gold series, um, and then you've got the the, the DD Panoramation line. Uh, Athena uh, is coming out with uh, the the tower, um, the clock tower, and, and um, some other accessories. So um, this is going to help complete uh, the DD line. How about the uh, the chair? Is that a pack in, or is that just a prop for here? The, uh, the chair it will be included with the Pope. Yes. Nice. Yeah. And same every, thing with the table. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, Luna will come with with everything you see there. Very nice. Uh, these figures, I recognize that these figures are just beautiful figures. But again, I am just a total noob to this to this entire franchise. But they, I always admire these figures, especially when people put pictures up with them in the group, and they look they look amazing. They really do. Yeah. The unfortunate thing about this series is that um, it's never never caught on, um, and it's it's a great series. You know, if if you've watched it, um, uh, you know you, you know it's pretty cool. Um, so I find that it's a very popular series with Brazilians. Brazilians, Chinese, uh, it's it, everywhere but the US uh, pretty much. Yeah, so turtles are out. Um, all four are available now. Um, and then we're showing uh, Shredder. Uh, we're showing him a little bit differently this time. So I think the last time you saw Shredder, he was kind of in a, in a crouching pose. Um, so we sh we're showing him uh, standing straight up. And it gives you a good idea of the scale compared to the turtles. So it's a little bit taller, slightly taller, like just like it should be. He looks amazing. Looks very, very good. Uh, I have all of the turtles except Michelangelo so far. If you don't have them out there, they are very, very nice pieces. Very accurate to the source material, to the show. Die cast. They are high end collectibles. Uh, they're going to run you a, a bit of money, but I would say that they're worth it as far as quality goes. They're very, very nice figures. Um, so, what's the plans for more? from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle universe, the 90s cartoon universe. Um, so Shredder is next, obviously. Um, we're, we're showing him. Um, but, you know, again, we're listening. Um, we're, we're hearing what fans are saying. Um, we get that this is a Western license and more popular here than, than in Japan. So, um, you know, we're conveying the feedback we're getting here to the team in Japan uh, to help get other items and, and things into production. So, um, or into consideration. So um, I'm sure that Krang is a huge um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, request. <laughs> yes, we've heard Krang, Splinter. We've we've heard them. April, Casey. Um, you know, we're 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 letting the team in Japan know that there is uh, demand for these guys, and um, you know, and they they uh, they will look into it. Maybe like a Mauser's four pack or six pack or something like that. I'm sure people will be interested yeah. in that too. So Street Fighter, um, Chun Li and Ryu are are hitting in. I think it's May. Um, we're not seeing the time. But um, so they're coming out. Uh, cool thing about them, besides the uh, 
the packaging, which uh, I think you've seen the packaging get, get a little bit uh, smaller in some, some figures. Uh, these are going to be uh, wider uh, for a couple of reasons. One, so you can see all the effect parts and everything that's included. Uh, they've got tons of hands, uh, uh, you know, uh, signature move uh, effects. And uh, another cool thing that they'll include is uh, some backdrops that when you, when you pair them together, uh, complete one of the scenes from the game. So uh, another added feature of, of picking up both. And then we're showing Cami and Rashid here uh, for the first time. What was the uh, what was the reasoning behind doing uh, Ryu and uh, and Chun Li first? You guys just feel those were some of the most popular yeah, top to characters. Um, you know, it, it's a good way to kickstart the line. Go, go starting with some strong characters. Um, uh, you know, Chun Li. Every, everyone loves her, her legs. <laughs> Absolutely. So we got that those thick muscular the thunder legs. Thunder thighs. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So um, yeah, just getting starting off with with some strong core characters. And Cami is no slender chick either. She's looking very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> She can uh, vice grip your. <laughs> um, what was the uh, what was the uh, reasoning for Rashid up with uh, with Cami next? Just a good mix. We want to we want to show that there's a commitment to the line. Um, that we're you know we're gonna we, you know there's there's no character that we won't consider. So just making sure we get a good mix of characters out there. And as far as the decos go, where, where are you guys at with that? As far as which game or which uh, which game are you really going for with with all of the, the decos? Yeah. So they're they're all continuing with Street Fighter Five. Yeah. And that's based on the popularity of of that game with, with gamers, or yeah, it's just the timeliness uh, and, and, and yeah, the popularity. So I see other companies going with Street Fighter Five as well. That's why I'm asking. I haven't played Street Fighter in years, so that's why I'm I'm literally asking as a total noob. So yeah, it's I mean it's it's um, it's the most relevant uh, one to pull uh, source from. And I think you know some of the other things too is as obviously as games uh, progress. Uh, they get more detailed, um, so it's it's you know capturing those details and recreating the figure from something like from a Street Fighter Five versus going back you know to like um, like I'm gonna totally date myself or like a Turbo Edition or something like that. You're not gonna have those type of details like you would like in an SNES uh, uh, version. So um, you know just just making sure that we that we're bringing through all those details that, that you, you see in the game. You know how many characters there were uh, in five? Five. There's, there's quite a few. There's yeah. Probably Twenty dozen, or better. Yeah. Close to two dozen. Yeah. There's more coming out soon too. Okay. Uh, I think it was important that you guys put out Rashid. Like you said, it's uh, important to let people know that these new characters are something you're considering as well because a lot of toy companies will get the licenses to these. Uh, this huge roster, and they'll just go with like the same characters. Yeah, they go with the same over. core characters, and, and then just the license ends up dying, and that's not what we want to do. You know, we want to make sure that fans get a good mix and a good variety. Um, and you know, uh, one of the, obviously, you know, female characters sometimes don't do well, um, and you know, we're, we've got a female character right off the bat in the line. So you know, again, that's it's just a commitment. Very smart move. Commitment to I Street agree. Fighter. I think it was very, very effective to do that. I agree. So yeah, obviously the effect bars can cross lines and can be used with a lot of different um, figures and a lot of different companies. Was that the intention from the onset? Was that you guys saw these kind of transcending beyond Tamashi, behind, beyond Bandai product? You know, the intent was to enhance uh, the figure arts figures um, and, you know, the fact that they're being used for other lines um, is great. It just so shows that it was a product that, um, you know, uh, we saw the need for and, and in, you know, are able to offer to fans um, to enhance their, their figures. You know, it's just one of those things that um, we're glad we can help. I, I, I feel like with the um, popularity uh, of display art and toy photography, uh, I feel like you guys are well aware of that, obviously, and are really trying to capitalize on that market and on that uh, on those folks that do that type of art. Yeah, we love seeing that stuff too. Um, we're big fans of, of, of that stuff, and and um, you know, it's it's great to see how and the way some some of the stuff is being used is is um, it blows my mind um, sometimes. When I, when I go and look at it and I'm like, wow, I would have never thought to use that that way. So yeah, it's it's great to see and, and we're you know we're happy that, that fans are, are receptive to these and you know uh, hopefully we get some, some more cool stuff uh, down the pipeline. 
Um, obviously, it doesn't doesn't hurt that it's sort of a free promotional tool for you guys too, right? Yeah, not at all. <laughs> well, like I said, the the intent was was to enhance the fig arts figures, but um, if it helps enhance other figures and and get the uh, get our, our name out there, um, hey, we're, we're cool with it. Batman has been solicited. Uh, he's up for pre-order in, in most places now, um, so you'll be able to pick him up. Uh, cool thing about Batman is obviously based on Dark Knight and uh, will be complimented uh, with, the, with the Joker we have on display here, but um, he's using a cloth cape for the first time ever. Um, and the cool thing about the cloth cape, obviously, is that it has uh, wiring, Excellent. so you can, you can get dynamic posing with it because of that. Uh, definitely better than the other offerings we had. I didn't really uh, particularly care for the Mafex ver version, but uh, wait, wait. this looks pretty good. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the wire in the cape is definitely a huge plus. So I'm glad you guys went that that uh, that route with uh, Batman. It looks good. Uh, what about Joker? Uh, we've seen them maybe like a couple of different versions of Joker as far as the face, and it was looking a little rough. In the beginning, looks like it's a little better here. Are you guys still working through that or what? Yeah, so, you know, the, the color print technology is getting better and better. Uh, if you look at one of the first releases, like a Michael Jackson to um, Harley Quinn now, um, there's just it's it's getting so much better. So as we get better with that, we can we can make things um, you know we can improve upon uh, on what you see. Um, obviously, when when something starts off in a prototype and we put it on display to where it goes into production final, um, it's it's you know it, things are going to change. Um, uh, so so you're seeing you know samples out here and, and as it evolves, um, you know, you, you'll, you'll 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 get to see it until uh, you know we're, we're ready to, to have it up for for pre-order. Um, and then, then what you see from that point on, when it's solicited, is, is, is what you'll get. So Batman and Joker, both July releases, or just Batman? Just Batman. And Joker has not been solicited yet. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And I can definitely attest to uh, the Harley figure coming out very well as far as that face uh, scanning technology. That's one that I own, and she came out phenomenal. I will say that. Yeah, we've seen uh, great photos uh, on Instagram of, of that Harley. So we're super happy, everyone. Everyone. Uh, is enjoying that figure. What's uh, what's going on with uh, the Fresh Prince's uh, <laughs> What's going on with uh, Deadshot? He, does, he doesn't have his flat top though. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to start seeing those those customs. Um, yeah, so so Deadshot again. He's another one of those figures. Deadshot and Joker. Joker will come out before Deadshot um, in as part of the Suicide Squad line, and they'll complement Harley. Obviously, uh, it's just a great portrait. Uh, it, it's the likeness to Will Smith is is incredible. Um, and it's taking that, that color print technology again and, and just really, you know, showing how it shines. Uh, any other plans for more characters from Suicide Squad, or you guys think that's pretty much it for that for that uh, particular movie? Yeah, you know, there's always there's always a possibility. Um, right now, those are the three that we're showing, um, and you know, if uh, if things change, you know, just, there, it, we we do many shows, uh, so it, it, we can't bring everything. Um, so you know, we'll bring a couple things at a time, and, and here's this is kind of the the stuff that's that's down the pipeline right now. Absolutely, a so. little bit at a time. Yep. I got you. <laughs> WWE is is one of our, our newest licenses. Uh, Stone Cold and Rock were, were just released. Um, uh, like Harley, I'm seeing some really great photos uh, with Stone Cold. Um, some uh, that you know probably not PG, but um, <laughs> it's it's funny to see what, a what lot fans. Of, a lot of comical <laughs> stuff, though. A lot of risque stuff. Though. Yeah, no um, but it's it's great to see fans are enjoying the figures, and and it just and it test you know attests to um, you know their creativity, and you know when you have a great product and and creative fans, uh, they can do some some awesome things. Um, Triple H will be next in the line. Um, if you remember. Um, some of the figures that we've done uh, with they have like a blonde hair, so he's gonna have that kind of gold uh, tone in his oh, hair. Oh man, we gotta talk about that. This is something that I've gone over in my own personal reviews that I hate about the figure wars <laughs> figures is that blonde highlight, that gold highlight, that overtone of, of gold. What's up with that? What's 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 the what's the the science behind doing that? So, you know, it's one of those things where it looks, it, it, that's probably the only way you're ever going to get that type of hair color is using that paint technique. Um, it's it's one of those things that there's not a paint that re can, can recreate that kind of shimmer mm -hmm. and shine of that dirty blonde, blonde type of hair. Uh, Luke Skywalker is, is one of those 
characters that you know we've seen. You know, if you go back and looking at like Kennerline, they had yellow hair, they had blonde hair, and he's had you know everything in between um, for years, and no one's been ever able to kind of nail that. And it, it just shows how difficult it is to get that kind of hair color. And um, you know. It, I guess from your perspective, um, you may not be popular with you. Um, I think I think it looks great. I think it's you know it it gets that hair color across. I don't know. I think it's probably like 70, 30. <laughs> <laughs> not in favor of of the of the gold. I mean, we just want to see blonde. I don't know about the the gold. It looks it looks a little crazy, and it shows up kind of nuts in, in pictures sometimes. But um, you know, it's not the worst thing ever. But it is definitely something that I've talked about. Repeatedly. Awesome. Well, it's good to know, and you know, we'll definitely bring it back to our team and, and let them know that there's uh, there's there's a 70-30 split <laughs> on on the gold hair. Um, but um, so you know, besides Triple H with the gold hair, we've got brown-haired <laughs> um, Undertaker and and Kane, um, which are the, our newest reveals. And obviously, you can see the scale difference. These guys are a lot taller than the others um, because they were you know, seven footers. Mm -hmm. So. Um, good to see uh, the print on the Undertaker. You can see the tattoos are all there. Um, so we've solicited these already, and, and you can kind of you'll you'll be able to see what the the pieces that are included with them with the hands and heads. Uh, cool thing about Undertaker when he does the eye roll, you'll be able to to recreate that. There's an alternate portrait to, nice. to swap so out. Nice. So we'll have one with his pupils not not showing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That's, that's very cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that was one of the comments, one of the snark comments that I saw on our Instagram the other day was, how are they gonna do Undertaker and and uh, Kane at the same size as, as uh, these other guys so that's good to know that you guys are actually making them larger and making it known that they are larger characters larger people you know? yeah you can see in the case you know they're they're definitely taller than than the other guys uh, in there and you know we'll, we'll adapt to you know if if there's you know if there's a nine footer we'll, we'll make it happen we'll make sure they're the right scale so um, you know if, if we go into smaller characters we'll make sure you know they, they get the right size so that's, that's it's very good to know we're, we're paying attention to those types of details, and you know, this is a, this is a great line. I think that um, the 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 displayability of these in, in, in wrestling poses, um, thanks to the articulation, and and you know you, you get the realistic look. And now you've got the ability to recreate wrestling moves. Um, makes this line really great. You can say it. You guys are shading on Mattel because Mattel <laughs> can't do this stuff. You can say it. It's cool. <laughs> we're, we are not shading. We're. <laughs> you know what's funny though is that. The uh, figure wise figures probably scale better with the Mattel rings. So uh, I've seen a lot of that. I've seen a lot of people using the Mattel uh, rings and using the figure wise figures, and I think they look phenomenal in those rings. So, yeah. uh, any plans for anything like that for you guys? So, we have the ring effect. Um, that we brought in with these. Uh, it's a good kind of statuesque uh, display piece, so if you want to have something in a, in a fixed pose. Um, but we'll bring that back to the team that there's you know, there's, there's uh, uh, requests for rings if, if that happens. You know, it really comes down to um, what do you guys want to see? Let us know, you know, talk about it in the forums, um, uh, comment about it, and, and you know, we'll, we'll take it into consideration. Even smaller things as far as the pack in, weights, chairs, uh, chairs yeah, yeah, belts, you know, yeah, all definitely that stuff. In, in consideration, yeah. We've, heard, we've, we've been paying attention to that stuff we know we know that that is out there so cool. um, any wrestlers you guys want to see uh, you know keep keep chime in you know I'm sure you guys are getting huge requests for Hulk Hogan if he's out of hot water we talked about we talked yeah. about him the other day if he's in the clear then I'm sure Hulk Hogan is one that that, uh, that you guys are getting a lot of requests for yeah and it doesn't have to be um, you know uh, attitude era it doesn't have to be you know it, it can be it can it doesn't have to be classic it can be new stuff too you know so uh, let us know and, and but just to be clear everything that you've done so far is what what era would you say uh, it's right around the same time so uh, Stone Cold you know it's at the height of the popularity of Stone Cold and, and Triple H and, and The Rock so um, you know we're, we're, we're working that era uh, right now but again it doesn't it, it, you know, it doesn't have to be from from a single uh, era we can, we can we can move around uh, last question and these are I, I would assume that the target audience for wrestlers are the American audience. So are they pretty popular in Japan? As yeah, well? you know, wrestling is huge in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, you know, Mexico, Japan. Wrestling, wrestling is a global, globally popular sport. Um, a lot of wrestlers actually wrestle, start in Japan, train in Japan. Um, so yeah, it's these are. I think WWE is, is like the, the the top league in terms of recognition. Um, so we just want. 
to bring uh, you know the most popular characters to, to fans. So Voltron has just been released, um, and he's getting rave reviews. Um, this is like the definitive version of Voltron. Um, if you grew up uh, watching Voltron in the 80s, and, and you had Voltron, um, the Matchbox version that came out here, or the diecast, um, uh, this is like like that on steroids. Uh, it is um, you know, the, the, the detail is there. Uh, it transforms uh, forms Voltron into it forms Voltron. We're not no, it does not transform. <laughs> It is not a transformer. No, um, it forms Voltron, and, it, and you know everything sli slides and fits and locks into place and, and looks you know incredible. Um, you got the blazing sword. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's a great piece and it's hefty too. Um, there's just really good uh, good weight to it as well. So um, from that uh, you'll see you'll see the Megazord uh, for Power Rangers. So um, you know again uh, it, it'll transform um, and and uh, details there. It's you know fans have been asking for it and, and so so here it is. Yeah. And this is slated for May 2017, huh? Correct. And I see that you guys stuck with the original American base Power Ranger design for the Megazords here. I guess that's going in kind of in tandem with you guys releasing the regular Power Rangers before. Correct. Uh, so I, I can see a lot of perspective shots and a lot of things uh, with these, with the original Power Rangers. Any plans to maybe re-release those Power Rangers? You, I'm sure, as you know, they're going for crazy money on the secondary market right now. I know a lot of people that still want them for sure. Yeah, it's definitely something we can look into. Um, we, we've, uh, you know, we, we pay attention to that stuff. So, um, you know, especially bringing them here to the U.S. So, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely consider it. Yeah, so the Action 66 are uh, are, are new uh, for for Mega Man. Um, so you have you have a couple figures that you, you will start to kick off the line. Um, they're articulated. Um, they come in a small scale. Um, the price point's going to be really good. Um, and so you know if, if they're popular, that lends well to other characters down the road. So I think one of the things that for me as a Mega Man fan, I've never seen some of the some of those characters uh, that, that kind of go deep into the line, um, especially the enemies. You know. And the, the fact that, that this this is the type of line that we can see this this in because um, it's, it's a price uh, friendly um, product uh, makes me super excited. You know. Yeah, I think it's very interesting that a lot of people are excited about the Volnut figure because uh, we don't have virtually nothing in Volnut like for Mega Man Legends, like Rock Band Dash, stuff like that. So a lot of people are very excited about the Volnut. Yeah, and and again because of the scale, um, it, it's it's. It gives us the freedom to, to kind of play around with, with, with different things and try different things out. So that's really cool, and um, you know, and, and it's great that they're also articulated. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to have little statues this size, but to have a have a fully articulated figure um, that's displayable um, and, and you know you can photograph um, in, in dynamic poses is, is awesome. And for those of for those of everybody out that doesn't know, Action 66 is a, a line in Japan that generally comes with like candy and stuff too as well. Yeah. Like yeah, so it's, so it's like a, it's like the equivalent of like a fast food uh, here. Um, I think is the best way. Uh, fast food toys here are, are, are kind of cheap. Um, so this is like this is like the, the Jap you know with Japan um, like Tamashi you expect high quality and so this is like a high quality uh, candy toys. So yeah, I can based on the candy toys or the Action 66 lines that we've gotten in the past. These are exceptionally well more articulated than some of the other yeah. ones, especially comparing them to like the Common Rider ones and the Dragon Ball ones as well. Uh, the Dragon Ball ones were limited, but again, like you said, it's, it's a very less expensive entry level type of figure. But these are unbelievable. I'm yeah, extremely excited for these. Yeah, I, I, we've had great, great comments about them. We're excited about them too, and you know, it's it's cool to have. It's it's the trading line. It's like. Uh, you keep it at a price point that, that you can you can get you can army build them you can get you know a lot of them you can you can experiment with characters so um, that that has us has us very excited. So these are Sentinels uh, Iron Man re-edit figures. Uh, the cool thing about these is the engineering on these is, is just phenomenal. Um, uh, when you when you bend uh, and and articulate the figure, um, the little parts will fold in so that you can, you can fully uh, accomplish poses that most figures won't allow you to do. So, for example, you can see the pose here um, on the ground pound. Um, it's uh, If you look back on the leg, 
um, part of the, the back of the upper thigh folds in so you can squeeze the, the leg tighter together. So engineering on these uh, is, is just is just incredible. Like it's it's really top top. Is that the newest uh, Iron Man armor? The all new, all different Iron Man armor? Is that what that's based on? Uh, I believe so. This is the shape changing armor. I think that's what it is. And, and I think it is the it, it is that. Um, and then also this, this, I think this is the newest one. So the re-edit is like their interpretation of, of that armor. Mm -hmm. um, so to complement that, um, what they're doing is uh, a, subsidi a subsidiary of, of Sentinel is Flame Toys. Uh, so Flame Toys has acquired the license from Hasbro uh, to do Transformers. And the first figure that they're going to do as part of the re-edit line is Drift. Um, the thing about Drift that's that's really cool is that um, he will have the same type of engineering and articulation that you see with the, with the Iron Man figures. Um, so he can't transform, um, uh, but he can uh, have that that articulation, and, and, and you know he looks looks really cool in, in robot mode um, here. You know it's just one of the most highly detailed Transformers you'll see. Um, I, I would even argue um, more so than the masterpiece um, because the masterpiece. Uh, figures, uh, you know, they, ha they also have to transform, so without having to, to make these transform, they could really uh, have the robot mode uh, match uh, the, the character art. Yeah, without having to worry about the technology to transform, yeah. you have a lot more room to play with in terms of really maximizing the articulation. Yeah, absolutely. For those who don't know, can you explain what it what True Force is? Like some people think that they're they're partnered with Sentinel, or like there's a lot of confusion out there in terms of what this line is and who's behind it and who the head's behind it. Yeah, so True Force is an in-house brand uh, from Bluefin, um, and our first figure was was based on uh, Mega Man. Um, and yeah, that's really all there is to it. Simple yeah. as that. <laughs> Yeah, I have to say, like the uh, the variant that you put out for San Diego Comic Con, but like, one of my top five figures of last year. Yeah, that's that's a really cool variant. Um, Black and gold is really cool too. Have you yeah. seen that one? Yeah, I have that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, so so yeah, they, they all you know the, the paint apps on those are are phenomenal. They're, they're, they're really sharp. So yeah. the technology on it, very reminiscent of like the Iron Man technology as well, like in terms of like his legs as well, like. You can like pull up the panels and there's like there's like boosters down there and stuff. A lot of great technology in that. Thing. Yep, there's you know a ton of ton of uh, engineering went into that as well to make that happen. So and flesh. I'm just trying to get a proposal before my phone dies.